Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect, and today we are back to our um, every two months stable release for Blender BIM. Um, so the most recent stable release was 23.07.01, uh, which was uh, two days ago for me. <laughs> um, and it's got a whole bunch of updates in it that we're just going to unpack and go through since the last stable release. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so, as I mentioned previously, these updates are posted on the OSARC community um, page. Uh, so, if you want to read this yourself, there's going to be a link in the description, um, but otherwise you can just follow along with me. Alright, so Dion Maltz, uh, the main developer of Blender BIM, uh, posted the, the update, and I'm just going to go through it. Um, Blender BIM add-on version 0.0.230701 has been released with 418 new features and fixes. Its our built environment helps support the Blender BIM add-on 100% free and open source software that lets you author and document BIM data fully to ISO standards. It's built by the AEC community for the AEC community. Get it today at blenderbim.org. Like I've uh, covered before, you can just click on this link to go to the website and then it'll take you to the homepage. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's a button which will say get the latest version. You can see it's 0701. We can click that. It's going to take us to a download page where you can download the operating system that you use. I use Windows, so I can just click Windows and it will start downloading that version for me. Um, so as Malt said, unfortunately, many of the features planned for this release didn't make it. Um, some of them are just on the cusp of being done. So they might be there in the next few weeks. Um, but for now, we'll just go through the ones that he's got. Um, and he's mentioned that he's personally taken a step back from the development for other priorities. Um, that said, he's blown away by the progress. And this helps show that the project is maturing and does not rely on a single developer. This is possible thanks to the entire dedicated community and their amazing effort in coding, testing, reporting, and financial support. Okay, deep breath, get ready, go. So traditionally, there is a bunny, <laughs> which I think represents Malt's bunny, um, on the launch update uh, thread. Um, and we can go into the changes. So the first one is drawing improvements. A critical bug was fixed to allow drawings with other different styles to be placed on the same sheet. Uh, so previously, if you had two custom styles, um, the one would override the other and you wouldn't be able to see them. So, so I've got this project here loaded where I have two um, plans, which look nearly identical. I've got one called default and one called custom. Um, so if I print both of them, right, I got my default style there. Um, which is just showing a few elements and then I've got my custom style over here which is showing a few different elements so if previously I had put both of these onto a single sheet so we've got them both on a sheet here I'm going to print the sheet and we can see default and custom style even though these are the same walls they are presented differently um, because of the style apl applied to those drawings so for uh, the custom style um, I've got my own um, I've got my own CSS and markers and everything. And then for the default one, I'm using all of the defaults basically. So, uh, previously, if you did this, um, the, the custom style would normally be overridden with the default style. So you wouldn't see your personal hatches and all that kind of thing. Um, so that's one example. Uh, the next thing is, uh, GPU migration is now finished. So Mac OS users can now see drawing decorations again. Uh, yes, uh, dimensions can now have prefixes and suffixes. So I've shown it here. If I go to the custom one, if we select this uh, dimension line and we come into the object properties, I'm just going to collapse all this. We go into uh, object metadata. We go to property sets and here um, under property sets, you can take this drop down and you can select, um, well, it'll say BBIM dimension. I've already added it. So it's here, BBIM dimension, then we can just edit that, and we have a text prefix and a text uh, suffix as well. So I've just got hello and millimeters as my prefix and suffix, and maybe I want to create a space there and a space there. See if those show up. Yep. Okay, cool. A little bit easier to read, and we can just print that. And you can see my dimension line says hello, 5200 millimeters. It's yeah, it's very, it's flexible. That's what it is. Um, it's a great and welcome addition. Uh, the next thing is decorations are now on by default. Smoother arc rendering and minor color polish. Excellent updates. 
um, fix critical bugs related to level annotation calculation. Yes, uh, same story here. So we've got a um, we've got an annotation, a level annotation here. So if I click on the plan level, I'm just going to move it slightly out of the way. Um, previously, this would mess up its height calculation, but you can see here it's um, adjusted and it's now working correctly. It's saying that that is a zero height, basically ground floor. Um, so we go back to it. Uh, huge optimization for text annotations on larger projects with hundreds of text labels. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty big one for me personally um, because uh, I had a huge project with a few hundred text annotations in the project. And for the first time ever, uh, Blender um, started to lag and now it's been optimized and it doesn't lag. <laughs> so, you know, great for optimization and open source is the way forward, honestly. Um, custom scale support was apparently broken and now it has been fixed. So uh, it was broken in that you couldn't save the custom scale. So if we go to our default here and we go to our camera data properties, um, you can see here in drawing scale, this is one to hundred. So if you went and selected custom scale, like I have for the custom camera here, um, and you typed in a custom scale, it wouldn't save that um, with the IFC. So now it does, and now you can use it and it'll give you your own custom scale. Um, right, uh, the next one, there is a new revision cloud annotation. Note that these are not yet linked to revisions, nor is there a revision management system yet. Yes, um, absolutely. So here I've got one. Um, it's just a red box at the moment, but uh, if we just print that, it's a revision cloud. It's a revision cloud, I don't know what to say. Um, it's an awesome addition and uh, honestly fundamental for drawing, <laughs> but there's no system attached to it yet. It's just an annotation. Um, so that is that. And the next one we're going on to is improved scheduling and arbitrary sheet references. Uh, schedules now support print ranges and more formatting such as bold, italic, font sizes, text colors, cell colors, and cell alignment, etc. Um, so if we go back here, I've got a schedule loaded uh, and I'm just going to say build schedule. And you can see here, it's got some formatting with it where previously everything was going to be this default um, shading. Now we've got a bigger text that's bolded. We have um, text color and uh, cell background colors. And then you can see this merged um, block has now got, uh, it's now distinguished from the rest. So basically whatever formatting you have in your sheet, it will come through to the Blender BIM file. So this is just an example. And yeah, uh, if we, it's on the sheet already. So if we print it there, you can see there's the sheet with the scheduling, with the formatting attached to it. And then the next one, is you can now attach arbitrary reference SVGs, including them on sheets. They are useful for legends, notes, blocks, stamps, and so on. Yes, absolutely. So if we had like Inkscape um, and we drew something very random like hello, uh, and maybe we come here down to this new button called references, and you say, you click on add reference and I've already attached it. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna say, uh, open that drawing and you can see I've typed out hello, very arbitrary, very random. And then you can add that to your sheet. So if we create the sheet again, we can scroll down here and we can see we've attached hello. It's got, it's a drawing with its own <laughs> values, um, just like the areas. So this is, your, it just creates a level of flexibility that is not possible in any other program that I'm aware of. So here, if we're in Inkscape, I could add another one. So I just click on the uh, draw freehand tool and maybe we draw um, a quick face, uh, <laughs> this is turning out a bit scary, <laughs> but you know, um, just a quick face and then we can save this document as a face. And then back in Blender BIM, we can add a reference. We can find out where we've got that saved, load it, say add reference. We can print it. You can see there's our face and we can also add it to our sheet and print that. And you can see it's been added generically. Obviously we need, we would need to adjust the layout in, um, in Inkscape, but there you can see it's been added. That was a quick, effortless 30 second exercise. All right, uh, the next thing is uh, raster underlay styles, external material styles, and a GI, a GLTF compatible rendering shaders and textures. Um, drawing raster shading styles are now saved with the IFC, so you can run trip fancy rendering styles. A number of bugs have been addressed related to underlay, so it should now be a lot more stable to use. General improvements all around. Um, there's also now a support for external shading styles. That means that IFC objects can have complex shader trees and textures in Blender, such as cycles and EV materials. Switching to, uh, switching to rendered mode will toggle external shading styles if they are compatible with Blender. You can also toggle whether to use IFC only shading slash rendering styles or external styles. 
So uh, that one is quite exciting. It's kind of merging um, Blender abilities with um, IFC ones. So, okay, so I've got an IFC, a very basic IFC file open. I've just drawn four walls and I've made sure to save it. Um, and then what I want to do is add an external style. So we go to our IFC material. Um, and then here where it says unknown, we can just leave that. These all have the same unknown material, so they're all going to change. Um, we don't need to look at surface. We don't need to look at settings. Um, but here we know it's an IFC material. It's been added. And there it's, it says IFC material. So here we just need to add an IFC style. And then it gives us a whole bunch of settings. And then here after that, it says IFC external surface style. So you can click add external style. And wherever you have a Blender file saved with um, with a material in it. So here I've got a brick.blend. So I click that. And then I just need to select the data block. So this is the material. So we're choosing materials. And we select uh, brick. And we say browse external styles. And it references that brick material. And then the last thing we need to do is just say IFC style. And change it to external. Obviously it's not showing because we just need to go to our viewport shading. And there it's like assigned the brick material. Uh, the one thing is that the UV editing um, uh, at the moment, I it's it doesn't import it at the at the same scale. So all you need to do is select the bricks, uh, select the walls, go to UV editing, um, go make sure in material preview, select the brick texture, U cube projection. Uh, let's do that again and then probably scale it by four. And now we have a, a brick material that is saved in the IFC as a uh, external style, and it is um, available in your IFC file, hooked to a Blender file, um, which is very, very cool. All right, the next thing is um, Shader code has now been fixed to be language independent, fixing a number of critical modal loading bugs for non-English users. Excellent. There is also now a UI to generate IFC and GLTF compatible shader graphs. This means that you can easily create different rendering styles for diffuse, glass, or glossy materials. Not just simple shaders, but also easily add all of those extra layers that make our shaders beautiful. All of these styling options cover the majority of simple PBR workflows for architectural visualization and is fully supported in IFC and GLTF2 for that matter. Create beautiful models, yes. So you can link your, you can have your presentation model and your documentation model be the same thing. Um, this is a little bit complicated, but I will be getting into it uh, in more tutorials. Um, and then this is very exciting. Incredible IFC Git development for collaborative native IFC authoring. So IFC Git was introduced in the last stable update as part of uh, Blender BIM. Um, it has been further polished and battle tested. And uh, yeah, I might as well just read <laughs> what's written here. A huge amount of work was done by Bruno Possel on the IFC Git integration. IFC Git can now list, create, and delete tags. You can also clone, fetch, and push repos report merge conflicts and auto update information when selecting a revision. You can now view a visual difference and select new or changed objects. There is now support for multi-line commits and tag, and tag messages to include commit summaries of merged branches. Um, the work on IFC Git represents a historic milestone in the ability to use native IFC collaboratively. Watch this incredible demo by Bruno Possel as four people around the world quickly start collaborating in a decentralized manner with purely free software on a BIM model, something no proprietary software is able to offer, has never been able to offer, and doesn't plan to offer. Um, so my next video will be a tutorial on using IFC Git, but um, this is an incredible, incredible demonstration between um, quite a few people um, who are heavily involved with uh, using uh, Blender BIM, and Bruno goes straight through a very simple, straightforward way to use IFC Git and how to coordinate with it. And they show you live. They learn how to do it immediately um, live. Uh, it's definitely well worth its time. Um, I would say just at least watch the first uh, 20 minutes and you'll probably get the gist of it. Um, but amazing video. Go check it out. I'll link it in the description as well. Parametric modeling upgrades. Uh, parametric roofs now support asymmetrical gables and ability to specify roof thickness. Yeah, that's quite straightforward. So I could show that. I'm just gonna go back to solid view and we're just going to add a roof type. So if we go here and we click on our roof and we just say we want a hip gable roof, normal roof, we can leave it as type X. Just make sure we select the roof type in the tab, tab type X, shift A. Grab this, 
<clears throat> I'm just going to edit this. So it is the same size as the walls. And then done with it. So uh, new adjustments for the um, roof type. If you go to the modify properties and you go to the IFC roof and we edit that, there are now there's now an option for roof thickness, which is the edge thickness there, um, in addition to the actual roof height. So if we change this to height instead of angle, we've got roof height as its own element and roof thickness as another. Um, very, very useful. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that as 100 and I'm gonna click finish editing. Uh, the other thing that has now been added is the ability to set a gable edge. Um, so if I want to edit this, I can just press tab and then I just select one of the edges and I say here where it says shift R set gable roof angle. We can click that and you can see it turned that into a gable edge. We say apply path and there it is. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. And yeah, it's just increasing tools and usability and making everything much easier. Um, if we go back here, we can say parametric railings, doors, windows, and so on on our display with project length units for convenience. Same for length values in P sets and quantities. <laughs> this would make life much easier and nicer for Imperial users. A number of fixes made for parametric windows for multiple panels, which has strange dimensions and non-manifold geometry. Um, so, so like this image is showing, um, the automatic window generator now generates um, uh, symmetrical um, elements. Uh, it used to be slightly offset, um, so it didn't really look quite right when you uh, printed the drawing. But now it is slowly, um, it's improved and it will continue to improve and it's amazing. Um, and there is now IFC 2 by 3 support for parametric doors, windows and stairs, which is amazing. Uh, so you don't have to use IFC 4, but if you're starting a new file, always use IFC 4. That's my preference. All right. Uh, the next thing is IFC CSV upgrades. Um, the IFC CSV saves the filter query in addition to attributes. Exporting classes or reassigning classes were also polished and various bugs fixed good improvements all around. And it's also had a function, its function signatures made more developer friendly. If you're a programmer, this will be helpful for you. This includes new commonly requested documentation on how to use it, as well as support for pandas data frames. Um, selection queries used in filtering drawings in IFC CSV now support rejects filters. This makes filtering for phases and other common P sets significantly more convenient. So the next thing is experimental support for alternative IFC formats such as SQL or SQL or however you wanted to call it and streaming. Um, there's also now experimental support for that and there is a, an IFC to SQL IFC patch recipe to convert IFC SPF to SQL with a number of toggles for different storage options such as entity reference list expansion, geometry blobs, full, partial or strict lack schema or dedicated properties tables. Um, this opens up IFC to an SQL based developers or systems, as well as the ability to load significantly larger models, models with less memory at the expense of query speed or disk space. Instead of writing SQL queries, you may also use the IFC OpenShell file and entity wrappers as an ORM. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can read the full details about this technology, its trade-offs and its significance on OSARC. This has helped identify a number of optimization issues in the interface, which have been resolved, particularly around fetching properties and quantities. Um, yeah, so it's a hell of a lot faster than it used to be. <laughs> um, uh, note the GIF shows an SQL light model where the data is fetched on the fly via SQL queries. It's nearly instantaneous. Um, yeah. Uh, there is now a highly experimental file stream option in IFC OpenShell dot open. This allows users to open almost arbitrarily huge IFC models currently with geometry disabled to do data processing on systems with limited memory. Currently, this is a only read only. You can also exclude classes from the stream for even more memory savings. So you can see it here. Here's an example. Um, if you just want to get into the metadata attached to the elements and do some data processing or any kind of thing that doesn't have to do with geometry. You can see it's just loaded um, empties, which are kind of like the origins of all the uh, geometry elements. And you can grab the metadata without having to physically load the file, which is quite useful. And lastly, even more bug fixes and UX polish. A number of bugs fixed related to 4D and 5D scheduling. The UI for cost schedules has continued to be polished, in particular support for reviewing and assigning currencies and the ability to choose an export location for cost schedules. A small but significant change lets you edit 
uh, parametric object profiles with the tab key, making it more seamless to users familiar with how you can toggle edit mode for mesh objects in Blender. Yeah, that one's pretty dope. I've really uh, actually kind of showed it. Um, so previously, you had to press Shift E um, to edit to edit slabs and to edit roofs and railings, and now you can just press Tab, like if you're editing a normal Blender object. Except instead of opening the mesh, it's going to open the parametric um, profile for you to edit. Very useful, very intuitive if you really use uh, Blender. Uh, Shifty is still available for now, um, but we think it's going to be uh, de deprecated, depreciated later on. Um, anyway, it just speeds up the process. You can see I'm just pressing tab here on the side there. So if you want to create a railing, for instance, um, so if we go here and we go to, uh, let's say, railing type, we just want to pull in a railing of some sort. Let's say balustrade, railing, type X is fine. <laughs> Remember to select your railing after you've created it. Perfect, Shift A, and I just want to edit this. Instead of having to press Shift E, I can just press Tab. I can grab um, these individual points. I can adjust them however I want. And I can just press Tab and it will automatically adjust it. It's it's super quick. It's super useful. Uh, GX, Tab, there we go, yeah. If we go back to the thread, a uh, significant optimization was built for deleting very dense mesh objects. So objects would previously, objects that would previously freeze or crash Blender would now finish relatively quickly. Yes, general performance improvements all around. Uh, Blenderman is getting faster and faster. Some under the hood changes were made to further decouple Blender object collections from the IFC spatial decomposition tree. So just disconnecting the collections from how IFC actually operates. This is a really fundamental change that removes a lot of legacy code and should also lead to more stability on medium scale projects and larger and potentially fixed a lot of bugs people weren't even aware of. Um, a few other potential sync bugs with styles also fixed. IFC Open Shell has also continued a lot of development in the background, fixing build issues, geometry bugs, the ability to fetch representation items, and potentially significant optimizations in drawing generation. This is on the horizon. There is an, a commit um, made by Thomas, who is the main developer for IFC Open Shell, which is what Blender BIM is built on top of. And he had, he made a commit after a nine hour train journey, showing something ridiculous like a seven times performance in drawing generation. Um, so something that was seconds before is now milliseconds, um, but it's it's going to be coming. It's not yet in this um, update. However, many of these are not yet available to users, but will be in the next release. Yes, yeah. A number of crashes were specifically fixed for Mac OS M1 devices. IFC Clash is now bundled with Mac OS M1, but it may still have some usability issues for now. A critical sig fault preventing IFC Clash usage on Linux has been fixed. Um, work has also been done to fix issues for the upcoming upcoming Blender 3.6 release. Go ahead and upgrade. So not so upcoming, um, isn't it out? And I've been using 3.6 this entire time to demonstrate what's been happening. So um, you should be very happy to upgrade. It'll work perfectly. Google Summer of Code 2023 Brick Schema Development Project. We'd also like to welcome Riley Wong. Riley has begun work on Google Summer of Code 2023 project to upgrade, improve, and build an awesome interface for Brick Schema. Brick Schema is an open data schema that focuses on describing the topology of building services and systems typically used in smart building operations. There is an existing very basic implementation, um, which has been there for a while, which allows users simple loading viewing association of brick TTLs with IFC. Um, Riley's project will focus on updating Brick Schema to the latest version, building undo and redo support, which is essential, save project support, and a number of UI improvements to make it a practical tool for those building brick models. Um, so far, Riley has upgraded Brick Schema and is pending a merge for undo, redo, and save project support. More will be reported in the next release. Very exciting. And thank you, Riley, for being part of the project. So much more. There is now a file association on Linux, so you can auto-launch Blender when you have an IFC file in your manager. So if you are in Linux, you can just double click on it. Just another reason to change to Linux, I think. <laughs> um, I think it will be possible in the future um, on Windows and Mac, but for now it, it's just much easier to set up in Linux. So you no longer have to open Blender and load the file. You can just double click. IFC Tester is now shipped with Pi PI, PL. I'm not certain how to say that. <laughs> for those using IFC Open Shell and Blender BIM add-on in Academia, there is now a citation file for all offered utilities. Um, just for all the different uh, tools you can get out of it. Uh, some critical bugs fixed related to material layers with no thickness that led to unloadable models. Improved type duplication and selection. 
Um, there used to be errors with uh, duplication and it's working really well now. Length values are now calculated and formatted the same way in the viewport and ren in rendered drawings. Perfect. Um, openings can be reassigned and parametric layers can reassign to another layer class or type. Um, yes, it's excellent. Uh, there is a new spatial tool and structural tool in your workspace as a sign of how to start accommodating more use cases than the BIM tool can support. Um, the structural tool is currently empty, but the spatial tool now includes relevant functions for creating spaces, regenerating spaces, managing space boundaries. Space generation also now considers columns. The idea is to support various workflows in different tools, which each have optimized contextual options and hotkeys per workflow. Yes, it's a, it's coming along. So you can see at the top, we have our BIM tool, our annotation tool, which came last time. And now we have our spatial tool. This adds all of our spatial elements. So you can see it's just got a few elements right now. So I can select these walls. And now I can say generate spaces from walls. And if you select all the walls in your project on a huge project, it will automatically fill all the spaces with wall with uh, spaces. And then there's also a toggle space vis visibility button, which is quite useful. Um, so you can still see the space, but now that you can't select it. And you can toggle it back on if you want to select it. Very useful. And there's, an, uh, there's a regen button, which is, <laughs> it, was, it just came in uh, in time for this update. Um, even though it was definitely possible before, but it just wasn't part of this tool. But here it is, and you can regenerate if you, let's say, if we toggle that space, and we move this wall, GY, or GX over there, um, and then we select this and we say regen, it'll automatically update to the new size. Um, so very cool, very, very cool. And then underneath that is the structural tool, which uh, doesn't have anything in it yet, but I'm very much liking how this is shaping up to work. Um, and yeah. Uh, IFCs can now be linked um, to a blend file via a relative path, uh, similar to the process that I showed with the external styles. Uh, this helps improve project portability, definitely. There's a new building story manager specifically to improve the UX and managing building stories and level elevations. Very helpful. Um, IFC and city JSON conversion has now been upgraded to now support V1.1 city object types. And that is wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, all the changes can be found here. Um, thank you, everybody who uh, contributed. Um, you can see Andre uh, is the main, is not the main developer, but he is now, well, for this release, he was the main developer. He committed the most. Um, but he's the part-time developer on the project that is paid for by donations. Thank you very much. And then there's Dion and there's Thomas um, and everybody else who has contributed uh, until now. And then here are all the donors. Thank you every, very much, everybody. Um, if you want to read this for yourself, I will have a link in the description. Um, please try out the tools and yeah, report bugs, um, try them out and see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm super excited for <laughs> where it goes in the future. The next stable release update will again be in two months. Uh, excellent. Bye-bye.